Okay, welcome to another uh, Graphics 2 tutorial. Um, today I kind of want to cover how shading works, or at least a small bit of it. Uh, it's not going to be comprehensive, but it should be enough to get you started. Uh, I have my toolbars minimized here, so uh, if I left click this square, uh, I can bring it back into view. I don't know if I covered that or not. Um, but if I right click it, I can switch between tools, layers, and uh, animation mode, and it'll show um, what mode you're currently in. Anyway, uh, to work in the graph in the different shading modes, you can go into the FX menu here. And then if you right click the shade option, um, you'll get something probably looks a little bit different unless you've set it. Uh, but I like to take the colors out that I'm not going to use because I'm going to switch palettes in this. So I'll left click and drag over it and then I'll hit delete and we'll get rid of all those to start off with. Uh, I'm going to load a different palette than what we have here. This is the standard one that always seems to load when Graphics 2 starts. Um, I'm going to try a different one. I actually, in the Brush Effects Factory button here, uh, I'll, I'm going to right click and actually Don Bringer has a toolbox where he has some default palettes included. That's These are additional plugins that you'll have to install yourself and it might vary where you put this depending on your operating system. Uh, but for now, this isn't really the focus of the tutorial, so I'm just going to go to Palettes, Preset, and... Uh, do we want to do Commodore 64 today? Yeah, we'll do that. I'm not sure which one of these is probably the best. I mean, they probably all vary a little bit, but we'll just go with Wikipedia's, I guess, for now. Um, I'm going to remove the old palette. I'm, I don't have anything to remap on the image, so we'll just hit OK. And you'll see that um, it blanks out everything else and just loads this. When you do load a new palette in, one thing you can do um, is left click the palette button and then hit the delete key and it'll map these. Um, these are for the graphical user interface. It'll restore these. It will stomp over whatever is over here, uh, but it makes it so the graphical user interface is back to normal. Also, I think it might affect some of the crosshairs. See the crosshairs when you use some of the tools. I think those might not show if you don't remap the uh, last three colors with a delete key like I did. But anyway, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna hit D to go to the, back into the drawing mode, and I want to show the shading mode available in the uh, effects menu. So to start, I'm gonna right-click the shade here, and then you can see these are all the colors in the palette. If you have a bigger palette, of course, you'll have more. Um, the idea is basically you you supply a range that you want to shade from one color into another. I think I'll draw... Eh, well, the Commodore is not really strong, too strong in red. I don't know, do we want to draw an apple or something like that? That might be kind of interesting and easy to draw. Uh, so you want to start with... And again, the Commodore has a hard palette to work with. We'll start with this as, as kind of the middle of the, the red color for the apple. We'll insert that. I want to go a little bit darker. We'll use brown. Uh, oops. We'll delete this one that it's on here. Um, and then next shade up. Uh, do we have another red that'll work good? And you can see over here how it's kind of building, uh, kind of building up a um, nice palette that we can use, or a nice gradient, I should say. And then I want to get to this. Uh, white, but I think the next closest would probably be uh, this gray. I really don't want to. I could go into the yellow a little bit, but I think that'll be just too much yellow. So I guess that's kind of our apple color. Um, one thing to note too is when you click on one of these, it shows you where it is in the palette. I think that's, let's see, if we're looking at white, I think that's uh, 15. So I think it's this 15 corresponds to the uh, number in here. Um, you can have multiple palettes. Uh, you can set them up here, but if they share a color, for example, if I had an, uh, a blue blue gradient that went to uh, white, I would need to start it on a different, um, I don't know what to call this, a grouping of, of ramps, I guess. And I think you have eight of those. So uh, if you need to share colors, you can always switch the current group of shades to the next one down and you'll be able to use one of the colors again. But if you don't, you can have uh, many different types of uh, shading down here. In fact, maybe I'll set one up. 
hopefully this video doesn't go too long. It's quite a lot to explain, but let's say I want to shade, I want to create a ramp that goes from this blue to this nice, um, well, it's not nice, but it's Commodore, uh, this ugly yellow. We'll insert that one. I'm going to put a stop between these two. So we'll go from that purple. Next one up would probably either be this purple or that blue. I think I'll go with that blue, just to be interesting. Um, one kind of rule of thumb when choosing uh, color ramps or gradients to shade from one color to another is in art quite a bit of times, and especially in pixel art, your shadows are going to be kind of a purplish blue, so you'll shade your darker tones towards a dark purple or blue, and then your, your lighter tones will go almost towards a yellow. Of course, you don't want to always make it really sharp, the transition is really sharp, but as a general rule, you shade towards your cool colors and you highlight towards your um, yellow or a light green, and that'll give you kind of a, a nice, full, um, colorful effect. You see it a lot in pixel art. So let's see, the next one up probably, probably should be a green here. Okay, you can see visually it's getting brighter, and the next one up will probably be yellow, I think. So, you know, it'll look a lot better once I get... Now, here's what I was saying earlier. If I want to put this white in here, you're going to see it'll steal it from over here. So what we would need to do is actually, if we were doing this one and wanted white in it, you'd have to do it on the next page. But you still could do it. So I'm, I'm going to undo that. I thought it would undo that. Maybe it doesn't do that. Anyway... I'm just going to go back here and I'm going to insert that white again. Uh, da, 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 there. And then I'll delete this extra little bump out here. So, what's going to happen is whenever we draw with these colors, it's go if we right click, it's going to shade down. If we left click, it's going to shade up. And the same will apply here. Um, if you don't want it to, if you have, for example, you have these reds and the greens on at the same time, you can always hit. Uh, you can set and disable it, and that means when they're white underlined, it'll ignore those for the time being. But I don't plan on having these next to each other, or these colors next to each other, so it should be okay. I can clear the uh, disable mode off that. So let's go ahead and start drawing this apple. I'm going to start probably with this here, and I think they're saying that is color... Uh, I have to look this up. I can never remember if it's the top color or the bottom. But I think that red is going to be, that's probably the, probably 9, 1, 2, 3, 4, yeah, 8, 9. I guess it's maybe 0 indexed. Anyway, so we'll start with that red color. I'll hit OK. To lay it down, I'm going to take the effects mode off. Because uh, since we don't have this black in the palette, it won't know to shade lighter or darker. So I'm going to rough out the shape of an apple. Um, I've got my brush mode on, pushing, pushing, pushing D, and I'm going to hit the period key, and I'm going to make a little bigger brush here. Um, <clears throat> one other technique you can do if you're drawing tree limbs or something, uh, you can you can put the brush down, and I'm holding the left, and I'm going to tap the comma key, and you can see, depending on how quickly you type it, you can actually control. Uh, the brush getting bigger or smaller while you draw. That's good for tree limbs and that kind of thing. I'm going to clear that for now. Um, but first we're going to draw that apple. So I'm going to also press F4 to get in my brush menu. And now I'm going to grow this again by pressing the period key. Now this is going to be real ugly and real fast. Uh, my point here is to just do a demonstration. I don't want to uh, I don't want to have to make the best looking apple in the world, but uh, you can see we've got a base for our apple, and I'm going to turn on the effects and the shade. I'm going to right click this just to show you again, this is what we're going to be shading with here. We're on this color, so if I tell Graphics 2 to go darker, it's going to go towards this end. If I tell it to go lighter, it's going to go towards that white. Okay. So. It doesn't matter. I don't think it matters which one of these brush colors you use because we're only making things darker or lighter. So I'm going to start by putting my shadows in first. And I think I'm going to shrink my brush a bit for that. Again, hitting the comma key. And I'm going to shade a nice uh, shadow in here. Now I'm going to use the right mouse button to shade the shadow. And you can see how nice that is. Um, oops. You can see if you go back over it, it keeps getting darker and darker. So. Uh, we're going to, actually, what I'll do is I'll just, I'm going to undo that. And this is where you have to be kind of careful, too. You kind of have to get what you want 
in one stroke. Uh, let me undo that. I'm going to shrink the size of this brush a little bit too, uh, hitting the comma. Uh, oops, I didn't mean to do the lighter. Let's undo that. We'll do darker. And I'm going to just shade here. And now I'm going to use the fill, the paintbrush. This also works in, um, oops, we'll want to right click to make the darker. Now I'm going to come in and I'm going to start, uh, I'm going to make one more pass to make this darker. We'll hit the D key to go back to draw. And again, using the right brush, this is going to be for our darkest pass here. And this is an ugly apple, but you know, we don't, I don't have a lot of time, so I'm just going to, just going to kind of start shading this in. Now, if you use the left key while on, in shade mode, you can actually do um, sort of a highlight. And remember, like I said, it's kind of, the Commodore is missing a color in between. We could actually, we could use the uh, the sieve and dither this a little bit. I'm thinking about doing that. We could also use the um, um, the spray can as well. Let's uh, let's see if we can get the spray brush. I'm going to right click here. Size 31 looks fairly good. And I'm going to use the left just to. There we go. And now if I use left again on top of this, we're going to get that that really um, that highlight color. That's a really crappy looking apple, but I think it proves the point as far as shading goes. You kind of lay down your base color and then left clicking and drawing will keep getting lighter and lighter and right clicking and keep going over that right area will get um, darker and darker. So what we could do is we could soften this edge a little bit. I'm going to go back and I'm going to hit S, or not S, but D to get back into my, my drawing mode here. And I'm going to come in here, let's see, well if I darken, if I lighten it's going to lighten those two. And if I darken it's going to darken one of those two. So I think what the, the key would be is temporarily turn the effects off. We'll turn all off. And I'm going to hit the uh, back tick key. It has a little tilde on it on this keyboard. And I'm going to grab this color and see if I can. Um, I'm going to shrink the size of my brush with the comma, so my spray my spray tool will be. More, oops. Undo. My spray tool will be a little bit. And I think that's a little. It's spraying a little bit big, so I'm going to hit undo there. I'm going to right click the uh, spray tool. I'm going to reduce the size. I think to about eight. 8 might be a little bit, yeah, 8 just to soften that up. Remember, apples apples are an organic thing, so they're going to have a nice organic edge. I'm going to hit the back tick to get the pipette, and I'm going to try. Now, remember, this wouldn't work that great with the shade mode on. I'm just going back in, and I'm blending, blending these a little bit in. Back tick to hit the pipette. You can also click it over here. Where is it? Over here. You can also get it that way. Um, so I think blend mode is pretty much <clears throat> done for the apple itself. Um, we could do a leaf on there. We could also do a stem. How am I running for time? Is my recording even tell me? 13 minutes? Well, I don't know. Should I keep going? Or Well, I mean, you probably get the idea. I kind of want to put a stem on there. Uh, we can use a shade mode for that too. Um, so let's go back into the to the shade mode via the effects menu. I'm going to left click to turn the shade mode on. Right click. Uh, did I set up one for? You know, do I have one for green that'll be a dark enough green? Um, well, I wonder how I can make a brown. I was thinking about making a brown stem. I could set up another color for that brown stem. You can see I'm sharing brown here. Uh, what I'll do is I'm going to start a second page. Uh, the darkest, I'm going to have brown be the darkest, so I'll select the brown, insert that. Next one up should probably be this nice lighter brown. Um, and then I'll do, a, to get to that red, we really don't have a good red, so I'm going to put in this gray here, and this should give us kind of an illusion of um, of brown. So I'm going to see what brown this is. This is 6. Is calling it color 6. I'll go OK. 
I'm going to turn off the shade mode for now while I draw color 6. Um, if you look down in this area, you'll see the color appear. So we've got color 3, color 2, color 9, what is it? Color 6. Okay, so that's color 6 there. I'm going to zoom in, um, pull back with my mouse wheel, and I can adjust the size of where we're zooming in. And now I'm going to draw the stem. Um, what I could do is I'll, what I need to do is increase the size of the brush. I'm going to hit the, uh, that's a little bit thick for a stem. Okay, so now I can come off this like this. Uh, oh, you see we were still on the, uh, the spray brush tool, so I'm going to hit D to get back to the drawing tool. And then I'm going to see if I can taper this a little bit. I'll hit comma a few times, and we'll get back to kind of a smaller brush there. Okay, so now what we can do, yeah, that's really, actually I think apple stems might be a little bit thicker, something like, are they like cherry stems? I don't know. Anyway, they're like that. Okay, so now we'll go back and we'll turn the shade mode on by clicking the effects button, uh, clicking shade. I'm going to right click and make sure I'm on this page again. Remember we couldn't use the other one because we were using that brown already, but this new range, it should be just fine. And this is our darkest color, so we're only going to be adding uh, light at this point. Uh, my brush is still uh, still pretty small. If I pull it on top of another color, you can see it's one pixel. So let's go ahead. I'm going to start using the left, the left to start shading this. And I'm going to use one more pass, and we'll get... Actually, you know what? Let me undo that. I guess if I right-click, we do get a little darker. I forgot to set the darker brown, so I'm going to get just a little bit, and I'm going to kind of make it organic. We don't want a perfect, perfectly smooth shade on here. And I'm going to come in here with this and just kind of rough this up a little bit. Um, you'll see uh, where it overlaps. It'll actually undo some of these dark spots if I go over it. So you got to think when you're shading this, if you want to undo a bright spot, it's going to send it back to that medium medium area. So now we kind of have a really ugly apple. <laughs> but that's kind of how the shading mode works. And, of course, uh, if we were to to um, want to go back, and I kind of want to shade this one. I'm going to go back into effects, right-click shade. We're going to go back to this palette here. I'm going to zoom back in here because this little little guy can use some help here and we'll just just get some shade going in there actually this whole this whole section could actually use a bit of a shade I think um, again you know apples are an organic thing they're not going to be perfectly shaded but you kinda get the idea of why the shade mode is useful because uh, you can begin to think of of drawing rather than just uh, moving from color to color to actually you know, shading an object like it would be shaded if you were you know, drawing with some sort of material on the object rather than just colors itself. That prevents you from having to keep coming back to your color menu and keep picking the brighter shade and you can just kind of just think of these things as um, shading a material. Okay, so I think that'll probably do it for our terrible Commodore 64 palette apple. Um, I think I've rambled on long enough, but at least you can kind of see some of the power of shade mode and how it automatically will try and shade one color lighter and one color lighter and one color darker and one color darker. Okay, so get out there and have some fun, make some pixel art, and have a good day.